Hey, this is Jason from SureShot Ranch, and today we're talking about internet connectivity in a rural area. And I think when we bought this place, we just assumed that because there were power lines that we had access to internet, fiber optics, the rest, right? We were pretty well aware that we had to drill a well and do our own septic, and, and but internet connectivity was something I think we probably took for granted. So reality check, right? There wasn't any. And uh, so the first thing we did was we used our cell phones to hotspot and um, you know hooked our other devices up that way. And while the, that worked okay, uh, you know it wasn't really great and we sure couldn't do any streaming video and it was chewing through data pretty fast and I didn't have an unlimited data plan. So, um, so then I, I looked around and asked the neighbors, hey, what are y'all doing? Uh, my nearest neighbor's nearly a mile away. And asked him, you know, hey, what are you doing for internet service? And he's like, oh yeah, we use this. I won't use the names, but, um, but a local company that does point-to-point -point wireless internet. So it's RF, right, microwave. And as long as there's a clear line of sight between your antenna and his antenna, uh, all should be well. So we did that and we were getting seven, eight megs per second of download and probably two or three megs per second upload. Not great. You could, you know, kind of watch some low res streaming video off of it. You could watch YouTube, things like that. But you, you weren't going to have two people watching Netflix in the house at the same time or, or anybody doing online gaming and watching a movie at the same time. It just wasn't going to happen. So we, we set out to figure out, hey, is there something else? And we looked around, looked around, and we found another company. Uh, the cost was quite a bit more. It was $130 a month compared to the 50 we were paying um, with our local guy. Pretty great company to work with, great customer service, but $130 a month, and that put us up to 15 megs per second. Again, still point-to-point -point microwave internet service, right? Uh, certain things affect that, wind, antenna moving, things like that, and we get quite a lot of wind come through here. Uh, not a lot of rain, not a lot of snow, so I don't really have that to contend with when we're talking about, you know, signal strength, durability, and all the rest. Um, I am right now on the list for Starlink, but uh, what I'm told, you know, Starlink is um, a, an internet service provider being established by SpaceX. If you don't know that, you can look that up. They're taking pre-orders right now. Uh, they're working their way from the north to south, so if you're watching this, if you're somewhere in the north, they may have it already. But uh, for, uh, again, Southern California, I'm kind of last in line as far as that goes. Um, so we're looking at the end of 2021 before Starlink is gonna be available in the area. I'm on the list, but it's not looking good just yet. So, so the quest continues, right? So still looking for faster internet connectivity. 15 megs has been doable, it's been livable. Um, it's not great for gaming, but it's pretty decent for you know streaming videos. Um, so the quest continues and I stumbled across a review on YouTube for Nomad Internet and it looked really good. Uh, so the review showed 70 megs download. Whoa, 70 megs, seriously? So that, that was impressive and got my attention. I did do some other reviews. They were pretty, you know, kind of back and forth. There was, there was a bunch of negatives, there was a bunch of positives. Um, so in my mind, that kind of weighed itself out a little bit, evened itself out a little bit. But um, anyway, I went ahead and ordered it. It's a 14 day no risk trial. So what's the big deal there, right? Just give it a shot, see if it works. So I ordered it. This is what they sent me, came in this box. It took about 10 days for it to arrive. So keep that in mind. Uh, FedEx, but it still took 10 days. So this is the Wi-Fi router. It takes the cell phone signal from the area. Um, in my case, it's T-Mobile and converts it into usable Wi-Fi that you can connect all of your other devices to. So these four antennas on the top are for what your use is and also the signal collection. So uh, on the back, there's a LAN in and three LAN out along with the power adapter port and a SIM card slot on the side. Again, it's just using regular cell phone connectivity, right? So uh, this is that, the box, and the, the, the DC power adapter. That's what you get. I'm inside of a metal garage right now, so not a fair place to try to run this thing through the tests. So what I'm going to do to give this the best chance of impressing you and me is take it outside. Uh, I've got a plastic table set up kind of in the middle of nowhere here on the, on the ranch. No obstructions, a clear line of sight to the cell phone tower, which I think is the most important piece here. I'm gonna set my laptop literally right next to it and see what we get. All right, so let's go outside and check it out. Way down there is the cell phone tower that we're pulling from. It's about six miles away, but more or less unobstructed. I've got the router set up on a plastic table with my laptop 
literally sitting right next to it. Um, I guess some may argue that's too close, so I'll move that over just a bit. Okay, I switched over to desktop recording. The glare on the screen was too bright outside, but you see I have the LTE Wi-Fi device selected that I'm connected to. This is the Nomad internet router. My Lawn Dart is my normal internet Wi-Fi at home from the current provider, the one that I'm trying to upgrade away from. The rest of the stuff down here is just different devices, printers and Wi-Fi extenders, things of that nature. Nothing connected there though. Go ahead and hit run. You can see that I've got T-Mobile uh, selected. It's who I'm connected to. And again, T-Mobile is the provider that Nomad services my area with. Running the test, we got a 51 millisecond ping, which is which is decent. I mean, if you're gaming, you need between 30 and 60, so that's that's decent for that. Um, go ahead and pull on about nine megs down, which is what I had inside the house. So remember, you know, now we're outside. I've got direct line of sight to the to the cell tower. Not much increase at all, actually. Um, six megs, seven megs upload speed, which is a little bit better than my normal internet, but still not what I thought I was going to be getting. So disconnect from Nomad, reconnect to my regular point-to-point -point microwave internet. And let's see, we got T-Mobile. Oh, it's still showing T-Mobile. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and reset this. See, it should jump over to Windstream. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hit run. Go ahead and hit it. There we go. And 11, kind of bouncing around in there. Usually I'm kind of between 10 and 15. Um, thing I should point out, there's two people in the house right now playing Fortnite on this internet. When I was on the Nomad internet, the T-Mobile service earlier, it was just me on that on that connection. No one else has the password for that router yet. So um, again, so there are two people gaming right now, and this is pretty typical. Um, with my current internet service provider. So, you know, originally I watched a video on YouTube and it, it showed a guy pulling down 70 megs, which is what had me uh, feeling confident in ordering the Nomad internet. And I, I just don't see how he got it. I mean, he had a directional antenna, but nowhere near 70. And I don't have that option with this device. Well, hey, thanks again for joining me here. If you liked what you saw, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, let YouTube know that you found something interesting here and other folks are more likely to stumble across it. So if you have any questions, just throw in a comment below and I'll get right back to you. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.